Good morning, everyone. All right, so uh, I'm going to give a talk on, uh, on explaining multi model, two main model. models. Model. Okay. Yeah, so uh, before I begin my talk, I right, just to let you know uh, certain uh, uh, during this presentation, certain images will contain like air of violence or discrimination, right, towards certain uh, uh, target group, which might be a bit disturbing, right? So uh, do take note. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, let's start with uh, the, some preliminaries or some foundation, right? So as suggested by as suggested by the title of this paper, right, we'll be talking about visual linguistic model, right? So uh, I mean, uh, in the sense that uh, visual linguistic uh, uh, sorry, multi model model, right? Uh, visual linguistic model in the sense that uh, you'll be taking uh in two inputs, right? A visual input and a language input, right? Then, uh, subsequently, we are not just going to talk about visual linguistic model, but pre trained visual linguistic model. Similarly to like pre trained language model in natural language processing, right? Uh, people have tried to adopt uh, the same methodology uh, in, uh, for uh, visual linguistic models for visual and language tasks uh, using the transformer architecture, right? So, uh, the following showcase some of the uh, more popular and mature uh, models developed between uh, 2019 to 2020, right? So we have like LX, uh, Merck, Bird, Visual Bird, VL Bird, and Unitor, right? Uh, the general idea of uh, this pre-trained uh, visual linguistic model is to actually produce a cross-model representation, right? That can be useful for some uh, multi-model downstream tasks, right? So for, uh, uh, in this case, for this paper, we are particularly interested uh, in the performance of these models in the multi-model hate speech detection, right? Uh, particularly uh, multi-model hate speech. Right. So uh, generally, uh, from this, uh, we can see that you know, uh, hate speech has moved on from just being a language-based uh, problem to you know, uh, combining information from, multi uh, from multiple modalities, right? So in this case, a uh, visual image and uh, textual language. Right. So, uh, moving on, uh, as part of like Facebook efforts to combat, uh, to combat the hate speech, uh, uh, spread, uh, spreading of hate speech, right? Facebook organized a multi-model hateful memes data set, uh, challenge, right, and published a curated data set containing uh, roughly ten thousand plus uh, multi-model examples. So, using the curated data set, uh, they have actually benchmarked various, firstly, a uh, uni-model approaches and also a uh, state-of-the-art multi-model uh, classification model. So uh, as we can see from the uh, results reported, uh, generally the multi-model uh, performance uh, is, uh, uh, have a significantly uh, superior result right, compared to like uni-model approach. Uh, and uh, yeah, right. then this actually brings about to our, research, uh, to our motivation and research question. Right. With so many uh, visual linguistic models uh, being proposed, Right, and it has been proved to be like, rather effective in the hateful means classification task. Right, uh, is uh, we, we are not really sure what these models are actually learning. Right, so uh, is these models performing better because of its superior modeling approaches? Right, if so, are we able to see evidence of such things? Right, uh, like such a uh, visual text uh, uh, grounding. Right, a uh, visual text alignment. Right, if not, what 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 is actually reason? Right, it remains rather unclear. So, uh, in this paper, actually, we studied three research questions. Right, firstly, we we, uh, we, are, uh, we asked ourselves, right, given that this is a multi-model uh, uh, approach, uh, what is the contribution of each modality? Right, does the imp uh, does the language modality has a higher weightage, or does the visual modality has a higher weightage? Right, or or are they equal? Then, secondly, uh, we interested in this thing called the visual text uh, slurs rounding, which is uh, a, a rather like a special occurrence or unique occurrence, right, in a social task like history detection. Uh, in history detection, we will have uh, unique uh, derogatory terms, right, that can be commonly used as like intonations or allegation uh, about members of a specific group, right. Uh, yeah, so bear with me, like, uh, two of such terms is like dishwasher and like good humble. Right, is our uh, dishwasher is to actually discriminate against female, uh, and saying that you know they they, they should be uh doing house chore uh, be housewife doing house chore, right? Then go humble is essentially talking about uh the Muslim uh having uh 
sexual relationship with animals, uh, bestiality, right? Uh, uh, which is just like a rumor or you know trying to be harmful towards uh, the Muslim uh, community, right? So this subtle derogatory term can actually be communicated through these contextual cues uh, across the two uh, two modalities. Then lastly, we want to talk about you know the uh, the bias and error analysis, right? So in this case, uh, both the language and the image modality have actually high them uh, it's actually of high dimensionality. Right, so we are we are wondering whether there will be like any data or model bias towards specific groups. For instance, uh, whether the model is actually sensitive towards specific group identifier, such as like Muslim, gay, or like black. So to approach this, uh, we start with uh, our experiment uh, settings. Right, so first, uh, to ensure the the reproducibility and the performance accuracy of these multi model models, we use the modular framework for vision and language. Uh, multi-model research from Facebook, right? It's actually just called a uh, multi-model framework, MMS. So using their framework, we evaluated the following model. So uh, it's actually just two, but on two different settings, right? So uh, visual work and view work, they is trained from scratch, means there's no pre-training, right? And then subsequently, we have visual work that is pre-trained on uh, conceptual caption, and then view work, uh, view work that is fine to, uh, that is pre-trained on uh, at, uh, Microsoft Coco data set. Uh, then the following is the distribution of the data set, which is uh is roughly we have about 30% uh hit uh 30% hit two and then uh sorry this uh, the number drop like 30% hit two and then uh 70% non hit two. Okay, so for, uh so for the first question, our first research question regarding the model modality attribution, which is what is the contribution of each modality? Uh, our approach is that we use gradient as a form of feature importance. Right, so this has been used uh, largely in the explainable uh, field uh, for deep learning. So essentially, we take the summary, uh, sum uh, summation of the normal gra normalized gradients for each modality to represent the contribution of each uh, to represent the contribution of each modality. Right. So for these gradients, right, uh, we actually use uh, Captain, which is a system of comprehension in Latin uh, library released by Facebook. Upon doing so, we are able to get the following result. And then we are able to make uh, this uh, observation that the visual modality actually contributes more in the, uh, uh, in the faithful means uh, classification. So as for why this could be the case would be that, you know, uh, image tends to be more uh, noisy and tends to be of slightly significantly higher uh, uh, dimensionality, right? So this could be a potential reason, but it, it actually begs for further investigation. Then secondly, uh, we want to investigate, you know, uh, uh, now that uh, we have both uh, vision input and texture input, uh, are they actually able to learn uh, what we mentioned just now, the slurge bounding? So uh, particularly, uh, in this case, what we're looking at is bird model, where actually the text input will actually follow the bird, which is they simply take the input sequence and tokenize to start word unit. For the visual input, they actually use a pre-trained Foster RCNN object extractor, right? To actually extract top hundred regions of interest. Uh, the re the reason for extracting uh object or bounding or uh, or like a uh, segment of the image is because these segments of the image are actually supposed to be like the salient information of the image, right? The useful information of the image. So for our actual implementation, what we actually do is using the back propagated gradient, uh, which is feature important. We actually rank the importance of the feature uh visual feature. And select the top nine features. Then we display the bounding box and then uh, visualize the intermodality attention rate. So for this, uh, we are actually able to look at the presence of visual text slur bounding for two common slurs, uh, dishwasher and uh, sorry, uh, good uh, F right yeah. So uh, that targets females and Muslim community respectively. So what we actually observe here is that you know uh, dishwasher, the word dishwasher is actually mapped to the uh, to the woman in the image. Right, with a quite a strong attention score. Then next, uh, we have uh, for the bottom image, we actually have the word uh, and goods that is mapped towards uh, Muslim uh, in the image. Right, so that's actually a uh, sign of this visual text. Okay, then lastly, uh, so, so that proves that you know, uh, the multi model model can actually learn this uh, additional new visual text from this. Then lastly, we talk about this uh, bias and error analysis. 
right? So in this case, we're actually looking at, you know, uh, what, actually, what actually makes the model uh, predict non hit me wrongly, right? Predict uh, non hit means and hit -pull. So what we actually realize here is uh, the word dishwasher and the word stem is actually back to the lady, and uh, they are actually given a high weightage towards being hit -pull. Uh, similarly, we have uh, on the right, we have seen like the word stomach is, uh, is contributes heavily towards the word being hit -pull. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, so we are actually able to get some kind of bias. Uh, do I have some time to wrap up? Uh, Dana. Um, it was very quickly, uh, not, yeah. not too long. Uh, okay, so just to summarize uh, three points. Right, so the visual modality actually contributes more in terms of facial mean classification. Secondly, the visual and linguistic models are actually capable of learning new visual classification. Then lastly, is uh, we can we do detect unintended bias uh, that exists in this such uh, in such multi-model models.